The main thing that we are measuring here is the extent to which uh, uh, enterprises usually are bringing cases complaining that their brands, in fact, their trademarks, have been misappropriated by someone through the registration by someone else of a domain name. Uh, and uh, of course that happens all the time. Uh, and now arbitration and mediation centre is the main means by which brand owners are able to seek redress against cyber squatting, that activity of the bad faith registration of someone else's brand. Uh, and in 2015, uh, we saw again an increase in the number of cases which the arbitration centre dealt with, some 2,700, an increase of about 4.6%. Uh, and a case may concern more than one domain name, so it covered uh, 4,300 uh, domain names overall. We are providing that service bo both for the class of domains, so uh, the class of domains like .com uh, that are called generic top-level domains because they're not linked to any specific country, uh, and we're providing the service also for so-called CC, country code, top-level domains, that's like .ch. Uh, and uh, uh, there are 71 <coughs> such .cc. CC is uh, country-level um, domains that uh, we uh, also provide the service for. Uh, interestingly, I, and I'll make just uh, three comments, if I may, uh, this is a very international procedure, reflecting the international character of the internet. So uh, parties came from 113 countries around the world, which is quite a significant number. The most, the prominent uh, filing country was the United States, followed by France, Germany, UK, Switzerland. Um, the uh, sectors of importance were fashion, uh, first of all, followed by banking and finance, followed by uh, internet and um, followed by the internet and uh, um, sorry internet and IT um, the other interesting thing that's happening in this space is of course that ICANN the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers is rolling out new top level domains and Eric will be able to give you further information on that. Uh, I believe that some 1,400 are planned and 1,100 have been rolled out. Uh, 930 or no. more. Yeah. 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 So this is like dot .guru or dot .whatever it might be. Thank you. Uh, I think we'll take questions. Uh, Yes. Right. <laughs> 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 I just want to do a question about the relationship between uh, the mediation and the arbitration centre and ICANN. Um, okay. So, if I may answer it in this way, there was an historical relationship, first of all, in that uh, WIPO was charged with the development of this dispute re resolution procedure. Uh, which it did, and that dispute resolution was then adopted by ICANN, historically. So then we go back to 1998, 1999. Uh, after its adoption, uh, ICANN um, accredited uh, a number of dispute resolution service providers, of which WIPO, the Arbitration and Mediation Centre of WIPO, is one. Uh, it's not only one, it's the predominant one, uh, but it's not alone. Uh, so our relationship now is uh, as a service provider, a dispute resolution service provider uh, to ICANN uh, in a system of dispute resolution that is managed by uh, ICANN overall, but which was developed by WIPO in the origin. Possible problems with existing trademarks. 
I think uh, there are two interesting sort of uh, developments to to follow there. Uh, the first is the one uh, to which you refer, uh, because there's no doubt that for a brand owner, uh, the task of surveillance of the misuse of the brand is complicated by the increase of the number of domains or, if you like, possibilities for misuse of the brand. Um, and so uh, it has become more complex for a brand owner. Uh, and that is an important policy matter. It's an important policy matter because at the end of the day, if you're buying in a virtual space and you're not seeing your uh, vendor, you have to place some reliance on the brand as the connector with the appropriate vendor. Uh, and so uh, it goes to the uh, integrity of the uh, system uh, of the internet. Uh, branding is an important factor in that regard. And the other thing I think is uh, the general evolution of domain names as identifiers. So uh, are people, are ordinary users of the internet going to be confused by a proliferation of domains, I mentioned .guru, Eric could mention you know, about a hundred new ones, with which we may not be familiar. Now, there once was a time, if, if I take myself as an example of a simple user, you know, when you might have typed in the name plus .com, now you'll be guessing and most people will type in the name without the domain in their browser uh, of what they're looking for. You know cushion stuff in company Geneva, you know, and, uh, and then you get uh, a list of answers. So is this uh, uh, increase, this multiplicity of domains going to reduce the domain name as uh, a, 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 an identifier that consumers use or users of the internet use frequently or are they just going to rely on browsers? The second one's easier, and the first one I'll leave to Samar to, yeah. to uh, answer in one moment. Uh, but uh, profit, well, we actually uh, don't call it a profit. Uh, we call it a surplus. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we had a surplus uh, in the last two years. So our accounting period is a biennium, 2015, uh, 14-15 rather, yeah. Yeah. of 70 million Swiss francs. So roughly 35 per, um, uh, per year, but it was actually slightly <coughs> different. It was 37 and 34, uh -huh. 33, something like this. But 70 million yeah. for the two years, 14, 15. Yeah. And the years before, similar amounts? Uh, not as big, uh -huh. uh, but surpluses mm -hmm. um, uh, in preceding years. Going back to 2000, well, uh, you know, we deal in these biennial yeah, yeah. Um, accounting periods, so we um, have not had deficits. But yeah. if you took an individual year, yeah. the year of 2009 yeah. was the first ever decline in the number of international patent applications. So, yes, uh, that year our revenue declined. But uh, you might say that the trend is, has been for the last six years, uh, to return surpluses. And then you might say, well, why? Uh, and uh, the main reason is that we budget on a conservative basis. So, Saeed and colleagues develop estimations of this activity for the next two years to furnish an estimation of what our revenue will be, and we take the low case and not the high case, so that we it's conservative budgeting. <laughs> well, um, uh, what we do with the surplus is put it into our reserves uh -huh. uh, and we have to meet a target level of the reserves that's 
fixed by our member states, which yeah. will give us the capacity to continue operations yeah. in the event of any catastrophe that yes. might occur uh, over a period of six months in, in uh, principle. Uh, so that's the first uh, and major purpose of the, the reserves uh, of the organisation. Uh, the reserves of the organisation are also therefore less dramatic, to use Ravi's word, uh, uh, events uh, such as um, you know, a, um, a recession which causes our revenue to drop below budget estimates yeah. and if we need we can draw on the reserves. So the destination is principally the reserves. But where do, you, do, you but stand? Where do they stand? Mm. Uh, uh, so yes. Goals, yes. Yes. They are. A bit more precise, uh, look, I, uh, uh, Sam, I will give you because I don't want to guess at that. No, no, uh, sure. uh, uh, Sam, I will give you. You're right. It's two fifty something like and this. You don't have an obligation to, to feed it into the UN system. No, no we're an independent. Uh, we're a specialised agency. Yeah. Uh, and, and by the way, of course, the reserves are also financing, but over the life of the asset, uh, our investment in buildings, yes. IT systems, yes. all of these uh, systems work on the basis of sophisticated IT environments, which, are u which users use. Yes. So uh, they are investments in infrastructure. Yeah, um, when it comes to the role of these new domain names, we've got uh, Guru Ninja and NYC here. Are these names that are coming out or that are, have come out? And could you uh, give us some examples of some of the new domain names that we might be exposing? Certainly. <coughs> Thank you. Um, you know, what you maybe to add a little um, bit of data to the press release that you have in front of you. You see here that 10.5% uh, of uh, the caseload under this UDRP system managed by WIPO um, <coughs> concerned registrations, domain names, in these new domains that you're talking about. That covers 2015. The new data is that when we look at the cases that we've received in 2016, and that's only two months uh, on the road, um, that percentage has actually gone up to 15% already. That's the first point I wanted to make. The second point is the Director General mentioned that um, ICANN, the organization overseeing the domain name system overall, um, has accredited, has approved applications for 1,400 unique top-level domains to the right of the dot, like .com, something else. The examples that you see in the um, press release, .xyz, .club, and .email, are among those 938, in fact, to be precise, as of today, new domains that have become operational since ICANN's approval, that have been uh, that have been the subject of WIPO cases, UDRP cases, the most compared to all these other new domains that have been accredited by ICANN. So, if you look at a, a broad overview of WIPO's uh, caseload, you will see that still the vast majority of cases concerns domain names in the .com domain, which is the classic traditional legacy domain, let's say. But we are seeing that the new domains are, are um, for better or worse, making inroads, um, becoming getting higher on the list of top-level domains that are the subject of these WIPO cases. And among those, the top three happens to be the ones that we are citing in the, in the press release. Now, if 938 of the 1,400 uh, domains approved by ICANN have already been, uh, uh, are now operational, uh, it's clear that uh, with further domains up to the 1,400 to come, that that really presents complexities, issues for trademark owners. And those are on two levels. The first level is in what domains will they themselves choose to register their own trademark beyond .com, let's say. And the second dilemma which they face is in terms of spending their enforcement, <coughs> trademark rights enforcement budget, um, against registrations by third parties in which new domains will they decide to proceed? Will they try to hit at every second level registration in every new domain where their trademark is being used or abused? Or will they be more focused? And um, maybe to conclude this answer um, with an example, there is one of the new top level domains, one of the 1400, is .bank. 
if you are a, a major bank, it's obvious that if somebody tries to take your name and sort of cyber squat that trademark in that bank, you will proceed against that by filing a case because that is a direct threat to your identity online because of the connection between who you are and the nature of the top level domain. However, it's clear that what, 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 is, what we are finding is that um, trademarks are also being registered in new domains that do not strictly relate to that particular brand. So, for example, you might find, this is it, it's a pure example, I'm not aware of an actual example, you might find the name of a bank, a well-known bank, being registered in .guru or .xyz. So you can see from this example that this really uh, presents a dilemma for trademark owners in the extent to which they will fight for their identity online to, to help consumers understand where they are and who they are and who they are not.